we have butterflies in our life flying around. We have butterflies in our neck. We are butterflies in our life. We have butterflies in nuclear medicine as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let's start with the embryology, just to, rem to remind you that uh, the thyroid gland develops from the endodermal extension of the floor of the pharynx, we know is the thyro thyroglossal duct. It distends through the tank and usually degenerates and then the thyroid develops. Sometimes we can have a remnant of that and we can see it as a thyroglossal cyst or else a pyramidal lobe. So the thyroid gland is located between the fifth cervical cer vertebra and the first thoracic vertebra. It has a butterfly shape or an H shape. The size of the thyroid gland is approximately 5 by 3 by 2, the isthmus 1.2, 1.5 centimeters, and weights approximately 25 grams. Usually it's larger in females, and on the posterior part of the thyroid gland, we have the four parathyroid glands. Blood supply, we have the superior thyroid artery and the inferior thyroid artery. Superior arises from the external carotid and the inferior from the subclavian artery. Sometimes we are having a third artery that uh, gives sub, uh, blood supply to the isthmus and is the imma artery, thyroid artery, which its origin might vary and the surgeon should be aware of that because it can be coming out from the aortic arch of the carotid artery or even higher. The venous drainage is done by three veins. Although we have two arteries, main arteries, we have three veins. So the superior thyroid vein accompanies the superior thyroid artery. The inferior thyroid vein comes from the brachiocephalic vein. And we have the middle thyroid artery, uh, vein. Lymphatic drainage, we are going to have a special lecture with the mapping of the lymph nodes by our endocrinologists. So just only to know that we have the four groups of the uh, lymph nodes and to know that the upper part of the thyroid drains via the prelaryngeal lymph nodes to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes and the lower part via the pretracheal and paratracheal to the lower deep cervical lymph nodes and thereafter to the thoracic duct. Here is the mapping. You are going to have it on a special lecture. The innervation is mainly from the middle cervical ganglion partly, sometimes from the superior and the inferior cervical ganglia, and we have the cartilaginous laryngeal branches of the vacuus. Here you have the ganglia, the superior, the middle, and the inferior cervical ganglia. And the surgeon sh should be aware of the this tiny recurrent laryngeal nerve that is in very near proximity with the inferior uh, thyroid artery. So during thyroidectomy, they should avoid injuring this nerve. Otherwise, we have temporary difficulty with speaking. So 
Here are the nerves, the vacuus, and the laryngeal nerves. This is the overview of all this we have said until now. So you can imagine how, I would say, difficult it's for the surgeons to do the thyroidectomy and why they, uh, they leave the remnants behind for us to have some job to do. So, uh, the thyroid it has two capsules. We have the two capsule of the thyroid, which is the condensation of the connective tissue of the gland, and uh, within we have the vessels, arteries, and uh, nerves, and it makes septa and lobules in the gland. And the false capsule is the outside, is made from the, derived from the pretracheal fascia and is thickened and uh, holds the gland into the cricoid cartilage. That's why it's moving, during swallowing and uh, speaking. So we're going to see in the afternoon in the practical uh, session, the horizontal section. So here you can imagine that we are having the two lobes of the thyroid, the right and the left. In the posterior part, we have the parathyroid glands. In front, we have the isthmus. <coughs> the trachea, esophagus, and the carotid sheath with the jugular vein, carotid artery, and the vacuous nerve. So we are describing the thyroid in our reports to locate the exact place where is the node we are seeing or the abnormality we are seeing. So the thyroid, it has the apex and the base and has three surfaces. The lateral from the position in the neck around the trachea, so we have the lateral, the medial and the posterolateral. And we have two borders, the anterior and posterior. The lateral surface of the thyroid is covered by a lot of muscles. The middle, it has two muscles, the cricothyroid and the inferior pharyngeal constrictor. However, you can see on this section, again, uh, that the the medial part, you have the trachea and the esophagus. And somewhere here, they are the recurrent laryngeal nerves. So this is the lateral surface. This is the posterolateral surface and the medial surface. Anteriorly is the isthmus. Because I'm out of the time, we just keep a few things. The anterior surface is covered by the muscles and the fascia and the skin, the isthmus there. So during development, we have different anomalies. We can have the anomalies of the shape, the position. We have the ectopic thyroid glands, subliquval or remnants, as we said, of the thyroglossal duct. And here are some shapes of these different uh, anomalies of the thyroid. Even we don't have isthmus at all. And we are coming to what is this thyroid doing? This thyroid produces mainly three hormones, as we know, the thyroxine, the triotothyronine, and the calcitonin. The mechanism of the feedback, I believe that everybody of us knows that, just to remind that when the basal metabolic rate falls, this triggered the release of the thyrotropin releasing hormone by the hypothalamus. This stimulates the pituitary gland to produce the TSH, which comes into the blood, goes to the thyroid, 
it gives the uh, impulse to produce the thyroxine and the T3. Uh, we know that the thyroxine T3, they um, have uh, impact on the heart, liver, brain, uh, bone, on all this. And when the, uh, the amount of the T4 and the T3 that circulates in the blood increases, they increase the basal metabolic rate, and this gives a feedback mechanism to the hypothalamus and reduces the production of the TRH. So, we said that the thyroxine regulates the body metabolism and all these things, the heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, breathing rate, growth development. Now, there are two hormones, thyroxine and triiodothyronine. 93% of this production is mainly the thyroxine. Triiodothyronine, uh, triiodothyronine is only 7%. However, this triiodothyronine is four times as potent as the thyroxine, but is present in the blood in much small, smaller quantities and, have sh and has shorter half-life. Uh, triiodothyronine is having approximately eight hours half-life, if I am not mistaken, while the thyroxine is having 14 days. The calcitonin is secreted by the C cells of the thyroid, acts to reduce the blood calcium, so is the opposite uh, function of the PTH that is produced by the uh, parathyroid glands. And it's doing this by inhibiting the calcium absorption by the intestine, inhibits the osteoclast activity in the bones, and inhibits the renal tubular cell reabsorption. And that's allowing the calcium to be excreted via the urine. TSH mainly uh, increased the size and increased secretory activity of the thyroid cells and increased the number of the thyroid cells. Uh, I know that uh, now maybe the endocrinolo endocrinologists have stopped, but before when there was a multinodular goiter that we are giving thyroxine in order to decrease the size of the nodules, and this is actually driven by this effect of the TSH on the thyroid gland. So, the parathyroid glands, we said, they are on the back, on the posterior surface of the thyroid gland. We have two superior and two inferior parathyroid glands. They are very small in size, six by three by two millimeters. The superior, this is good to know for our imaging uh, techniques, are more constant in the position, in the location. However, the inferior, they may vary. And this is the reason why we usually see ectopic parathyroid glands when doing our uh, scintigraphy of the inferior parathyroid glands. They are more strengthened than to see ectopic parathyroid adenoma coming from, the, from a superior parathyroid gland. The superior glands are usually dorsal to the recurrent laryngeal nerves, and the inferior are ventral to it. Vascular supply and lymphatic drainage usually comes from the arteries of the uh, thyroid. Usually they have two or more arteries, and the lymphatic uh, vessels is the same as the thyroid and thymus. The innervation is vasomotor, but not secre uh, secretomotor, and the activity is controlled by variations in the blood calcium. So it's inhibited when the calcium in the blood is high and stimulated when the calcium level falls. The half-life is approximately only four minutes of the PTH, and we can measure different parts of this parathormone by the uh, immunoassays, and we have an average PTH level between 
10 to 60 or 10 to 70 picograms per ml. So how it uh, works? It affects the osteoclasts of the bone break down, so calcium is released into the blood. The, on the intestines, increases the uptake of calcium from the intestine, and on the kidneys, stimulates the reabsorption of the calcium in the kidney tubules. It reduces the reabsorption of the phosphate, which means more phosphate is excreted through the urine and increases the activity of the active form of the vitamin D. I think I was very quick because everything is going to be repeated and by the radiologists and by the endocrinologists. So uh, I have finished.